Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about how to hook up a digital camera, whether it's a DSLR or mirrorless camera, to your computer using something like the Elgato CamLink 4K. Uh, basically what these types of devices do is allow you to plug it in via USB uh, and then plug in an HDMI cable and capture whatever is connected to that HDMI cable. In our case, you know, unlike a normal capture card where you have an in and then an out that feeds your monitor, we only need to capture a source to our computer. So something small like this uh, is much simpl simpler to use and will do us just great. Uh, so I'm going to walk you guys through actually everything that you're going to need to do this, uh, which namely uh, isn't much. And then I'm also gonna show you guys how to set it up exactly inside of OBS uh, to make sure that you're getting the best quality out of it. All right, so let's go ahead and roll the intro and jump into today's video. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. And like I said, today we're gonna to dive in exactly how to hook up a camera. Maybe you're sick and tired of using a webcam like I use the uh, Logitech C920, a lot of streamers do, it's pretty popular. Uh, and you wanna upgrade the quality of your camera image. So you're going to something like this Canon M200, uh, which in my opinion, if you're in the Canon ecosystem is a great little starter camera uh, and it's fairly cheap. And the kit lens that comes with it actually does really, really well. Uh, at a nice wide angle. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and jump through the equipment that you're gonna need to do this. And then also some other equipment that's optional, but that I think might help you out if you're actually gonna do this. So first things first, you're gonna need a camera, whatever digital camera you prefer. The only main requirement is that it has an HDMI output so that you can run an HDMI cable from it to your cam link. Uh, and then the other thing to note is it must supply clean HDMI out. Uh, this means that it displays a, a video signal that does not have any of the information that you would typically see on your camera when you're just shooting with it. Instead, it provides just a clean image. So outside of that, uh, the only other thing that you absolutely need uh, is an HDMI cable. Uh, obviously, one end of the HDMI cable is gonna plug into the cam link and then the other end of it would plug into your camera. So for example, uh, on this camera, it actually goes from a normal size USB all the way down to a micro USB. So I have a normal H a HDMI uh, on one side and mini or micro uh, HDMI on the other side that then plugs into my camera. And uh, that's actually all you need uh, to get your camera to display on your computer. However, as I said, there are a couple other things that I think would help you out. Uh, so I'm gonna go over those real, real quick. First things first is unlike a webcam, uh, there is no way to really mount it on top of your monitor. Uh, the webcam has a built-in base. So what I use is I have this little device, uh, which I actually got for something different, uh, but it's basically just a clamp uh, that would clamp on your monitor and then allows you to connect your camera to it. Now, I personally, this is made by Small Rig. Uh, they make really high quality products for a good cost. I think this ran me about $15 on Amazon and it is very sturdy, uh, very sturdy and well built. Uh, so definitely recommend out their stuff. Uh, definitely recommend their stuff if you're looking for something like that. Otherwise, you could use a tripod or something if you have the space behind your desk. Where I'm set up, my desk is against the wall, so I really don't have that option to use a tripod behind it. Uh, but you could if you needed to. The second thing that I think would help you out tremendously is actually the cable that comes with the CamLink 4K. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, if you plug in the CamLink 4K to your computer, and let's say you have another USB uh, port right next to it, you're most likely not gonna be able to use that USB port uh, just because of the housing on this device. Uh, so you kinda got it crammed in there and then it's kinda off to the side and another one's in there. So this just allows you to, to use the USB port, then plug your cam link into it. It's basically just an extender, a high quality cable, very thick, uh, and basically just allows you to use it in your USB port and then still be able to use the port next to it. Last but not least, uh, a dummy battery. So what a dummy battery is, is it's basically a fake battery that goes inside your camera uh, and then you can plug in a AC power adapter to it, which lets you plug your camera directly into an outlet uh, and then run it continuously for hours on end. Uh, if you're just trying to use the battery inside the camera, uh, 
as long as you're not going over like a two hour stream, you should be fine. Uh, however, with a lot of game and live streams, which is mainly what this channel is about, uh, they tend to run for quite some time. Uh, so um, so investing into one of these, uh, again, like 15 to $20 on Amazon, and I'll link it down in the description below, uh, the one that I use uh, that works really well. Uh, but having that, I think, is a great addition to your kit as well. And then last thing I wanna mention is there are alternatives out to the CamLink uh, 4K. So this bad boy here, it's just, it's not branded at all. It's called HDMI Video Captures on it. Uh, it claims 1080p 60 FPS, which is the same uh, as the cam link. Uh, however, there have been some rumors that it's not actually 60 FPS compatible and that it only does up to 30 FPS. But nonetheless, I have tested both of these units out. In fact, I made a video one time that said that there was really no quality difference between the two. Uh, and I have found out that there is a little bit of a quality difference uh, after messing with some settings and stuff. Uh, and with that said, the cam link does look a little better uh, and runs a little bit smoother with that 60 FPS. However, this with tax and everything will run you about $140 for the 4K version, uh, which does 1080p at 60 frames per second. Whereas this device will cost you about 30 bucks on Amazon. So if you're on a budget, it's pretty dang close. Uh, and if I, you know, was on a budget and looking for something and, and had a camera and stuff, but just didn't have the money to grab one of these, I'd have no problem personally uh, picking one of these up on Amazon for $30. Again, I'll link it down in the description below uh, just so all this stuff's easy for you to find. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and hook everything up to the computer. Uh, just gonna run like a B-roll sequence of me hooking everything up. And then when I come back, we'll actually be inside the computer uh, doing a screen recording and I'll show you guys how to set everything up inside OBS. Okay guys, we got everything hooked up and now we're inside the computer. As you can see on the screen, we got OBS Studio open. And uh, the way to, to add this is actually quite simple. As I said from the beginning, none of this is as complicated as it may seem. Uh, so to add it, we're actually gonna go to our sources. So first you're gonna wanna select your scene. I just have a test scene here that I'm gonna load it up into, uh, but you would place this into any scene that you have. So under our sources, once we're in the correct scene, we're just gonna hit the plus button and we're gonna select video capture device. Uh, this is the same source that you would use if you were uh, selecting a webcam or any other type of capture card. So we're gonna go ahead and click on video capture device. You're gonna be uh, shown this normal screen which allows you to name the source or to select an existing source. So for example, you know, once you have this added in once in one scene, you can go to other scenes and it'll show up under your ad existing, like my C920 Logitech webcam here. Uh, but we're gonna name this one Cam Link 4K. That way we'll know what it is going forward under the ad existing. And we're gonna click OK. And then here under devices, uh, we're gonna need to change that to the Cam Link 4K. Once we do that, boom, you're gonna see it pop up and it's now added. You can hit OK and everything's there. However, like I said, to make sure that we get the best settings, and this isn't absolutely necessary, uh, but what I like to do is instead of having everything set to default and being done uh, automatically by the computer, I'm always a fan of setting everything to manual if you're able to. So we're going to select the resolution and change it from default to custom. And we're going to select our resolution and, and there's only one option, 1920 by 1080 p And we're going to make sure our FPS is set to 59.94 uh, or 60 frames per second. Then we're going to go ahead and hit OK and boom, there we go. It's added in. If you're using a green screen, you're gonna to go to your filters by right-clicking on the CamLink 4K now. 
you're going to go ahead and add an effect filter, your chroma key. You can leave it named as chroma key. And then you're going to adjust your settings inside here to make sure that everything is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and set this. Uh, I like to use 420 here. This is what I found works best for me and the color spill. I like going down to 80 uh, just because I, I feel like I don't need it quite as high as what that is. And then smoothness, we're going to take it down to 60. So now the only other thing you might want to do in here is if you go back into the filters is you might want to add a color correction filter. Uh, and, and this is just going to allow you to, to boost your contrast and your saturation just a touch. I think adding a little bit of contrast and a little bit of saturation uh, really helps with cameras. So we're just going to increase it. Not very much. You can see. Well, let me show you by dragging and just show you what it does. So as I increase it, it just adds some more deep to the blacks and some more, uh, you know, it, it, it just separates the lights and the darks of the image. So again, we don't want to do this very much. So I'm just going to take it up to 0 0.10 and saturation. Same thing. If I increase it, you're going to see it add some color back in that we moved uh, with the chroma key. Or even if you're not using a chroma key, just helps to add a little bit of color in. Again, the biggest thing with all these things is never overdoing it. So we're just going to go with 0 0.10 and boom, there we go. We now have a green screen, great looking camera. You can see right now on the screen that you're watching, uh, my webcam, which is the Logitech C920 in the bottom right, as well as the Canon M200 in the OBS. Uh, so you can kind of decide how much better you think it looks or how much better you don't. Uh, I will say uh, that it definitely adds in more detail and stuff using a DSLR or mirrorless camera than you get with a webcam. You don't have as much smooth in it, uh, smoothening and stuff happening. Uh, but I will also say, Webcams with the right lighting, I got two different lights here, a key light and a fill light, uh, as well as with some tweaking of the settings can look quite good themselves. So it's entirely up to you. You do get better quality out of the camera. Uh, coloring's kind of up to you. All right, and that's how you do it. Pretty easy, like I said. So hope that helped you guys out. Uh, if it did, make sure you leave a like on the video. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell next to the subscribe button to get notified when I post new videos. And until next time, peace out, everybody.